When I first started working on biomedical research laboratories as an architect, I was pulled aside by one of the scientists uh, who was going to be occupying this building. And he said to me that all those uh, miles of laboratory, wet bench laboratories, uh, that were uh, filling the 400,000 square foot building were really more about where ideas are tested. That the true sparks of creative genius uh, in the research environment were really about the spaces in between the laboratory itself. Uh, the uh, coffee machine, the uh, lounge, the stairwell even, or where the neuroscientist and the biophysicist could run into each other and share what they'd each been working on and perhaps uh, come up with some new ideas that neither one of them independently might have considered. So really we've been focusing on the collaborative spaces in between in the design of research uh, environments uh, so that we can reinforce that sense of discovery and interaction. Architecture here, uh, we believe, can enhance the scientific purposes of Fermilab. Um, again, to the presuppositions here that we have a beautiful environment, um, that that's important to have, uh, to maintain that, that environment. Um, we can build attractive buildings that are primarily functional. Uh, obviously, if, if a scientific purpose is at hand, uh, the building needs to be able to enclose that, uh, uh, adapt to it, uh, meet the requirements of temperature and space and cranes and heights and all the functional things we need for the large things that we do. Producing architecture, we are using materials from the earth. Um, as we all know, uh, there are, these are limited resources uh, in the actual production of buildings in the construction as well as in the occupancy and operations of buildings. We are using energy and natural resources for the entire lifespan. Environmental considerations are key in the design of laboratory and research facilities today. Here at Argonne, because we're a Department of Energy laboratory, it's a base requirement for us to meet the LEED Gold standard in the design of any new facility. Additionally, on our new Energy Sciences building, our program sponsor, put additional requirements that will make the building the highest performing facility here on site. The, the external environment at Fermilab is considered very important to our architecture. Just protecting the environment, enhancing it, prairie restoration, trying to minimize disruption to, to the wetlands, uh, and, and really working in harmony with the environment is what we try to do. So an example of good architecture housing science at Argonne can be exhibited by our Center for Nanoscale Materials program. This facility was designed to house user programs where the each, each experiment being done is determined through a proposal process. This means that every year the research going on throughout the facility is different than the year before. And the facility has to be able to be successful. The facility has to be able to transition through all of these different users. I think there's been an interesting evolution in uh, the path of architecture, housing, science, and research, the act of research. Uh, going from more of an enclosed interior focus where you have individual windows punched op into limestone or masonry openings as you look around the University of Chicago campus uh, into uh, more of a transparency. And so as we think about the design of the new uh, William Eckert Research Center and right across the street, the Mansueto Library, uh, the building is all about transparency. Uh, the research materials are stored below ground, out of sight, um, out of weather, uh, but then brought up to this grand glass-domed uh, research floor where the natural light uh, soaks the interior. It's very clear as you traverse Ellis Avenue and 57th Street uh, that there are serious scholars and students and others uh, inside. Uh, participating singularly and together in the act of research. So architecture has changed over the years to support research and development facilities and, and the best way to look at that is to understand how research itself has evolved. How scientists work in the spaces that used to be a very exclusive, very closed environment um, and now it's a much more open, dynamic, integrative activity and in order to support that, the architecture has had to change. Architects and scientists tend to both be looking at pushing the boundaries of nature and the natural world to understand as well as to innovate. 
And as the world is paying much more attention to uh, the limits on our resources and the desire to be environmentally sustainable, I see architects and scientists coming ever more together in that effort.